Mind Your Farm Business on realagriculture.com is brought to you by RBC Royal Bank. As Canadian farms continue to grow, so does the need for talented employees who can help farmers reach their business goals. But how do you find and attract those individuals? And once you have them in your employ, how do you keep them? Welcome to Mind Your Farm Business. I'm Bernard Tobin. On this episode, we're going to take a closer look at what farmers can do to attract and retain top talent. Does it come down to money? Does paying top dollar automatically land you skilled, committed people? As a manager, when you hire employees, do you have the skills to keep them engaged? What role does benefits, performance reviews, and good communication play in keeping your help happy and committed? Now to talk about attracting and retaining farm employees, we're joined by Lynn Perry from Integrity Human Resources Services. Hi Lynn, hey, thanks for joining us on Mind Your Farm Business. Hi, I'm excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Great. So, hey, you know, when you, when you start this process, what's the first step farmers need to consider to attract good employees? I think the first step that farmers need to take when considering how to attract candidates to their vacancies is really what are my business needs? And not just what are my business needs within my daily operations, but what are my business needs as I look ahead at more, you know, strategic planning. And one um, resource that I often recommend to clients that I work with in farming is the business scorecard offered by the Agri-Food Management Institute. Through using this tool, farmers are well equipped to learn more about their business needs within daily operations and outside of daily operations into more strategic long-term goals. By understanding what these needs are, but to understand what type of skill set they require from a potential employee to meet the need. Right. So what are, what are farmers going to learn from, from that scorecard? Give us an example there. Okay, well, um, the scorecard focuses on 10 diverse aspects of um, the farmer's business plan. Really, it focuses on strategy, their target market, production, suppliers, finances, information and systems, the people, risks, responsibility, and succession planning. The, the farmer really is the vice president of their entire operation, and they do need to be understanding their business needs holistically and not in isolation of each other. The wonderful advantage that that can present to a farmer is you may be able to find one person who can meet several different business needs. But if you don't truly understand where your gaps are and the types of skills you may need to fill them, you won't see that potential in your future applicants. Do we, do we reach out? Do we go out to the labor market and post you know, job uh, notices? How do we go from here? Well, by better understanding the needs of their business and, and the unique needs of their business, farmers can better strategically target the labor market to attract the right candidates, uh, candidates, candidates with efficiency. So it's important to consider where to post job vacancies dependent on the type of role. There's excellent job boards available in ag, and they are all, and most of them are very effective. But you don't want to also forget your personal network. In my experience, um, many of the valuable candidates that I've um, been able to place or hire in past positions that I've had, um, I've met through my network. Mm -hmm. I've put the word out there that this is the type of position I'm hiring and these are the type of people I'm looking for, and the word gets out there. Egg tends to be a wonderfully connected um, sector to work in, mm -hmm. and, and merely spreading the word you can be very beneficial when recruiting. Um, another thing that I've always encouraged farmers to do, because sometimes as it relates to human resources, um, you know, we're working within fixed budgets most of the time. So we can attract the right candidates, and that doesn't have to come at a high cost. I have definitely um, uh, supported my clients in accessing professional associations and post-secondary institutions to promote their job postings for free. And the wonderful thing about um, especially the um, post-secondary institutions is that they don't just reach their student body base, but they also have a huge reach to their alumni. And so I would, I would always encourage farmers to check out those types of things if, if 
um, those are the skill sets you require. Right. So that could be, for example, the University of Guelph or, you know, the U of A in the West. You know, uh, Conestoga College, uh, local to us here, has excellent food technology programs. Right. So it, we don't just need to um, we don't we want to create the largest applicant pool as possible. Right. In similar to playing the lottery, the more times you play, the more likely it is that you will win in, in recruitment. The larger your applicant pool and the more people you have to meet and consider, the more likely you're going to find the right fit for a long term relationship. And so I would definitely broaden outside of just university institutions and start looking at professional associations and colleges to a start um, widening your applicant pool and maybe meeting a more diverse workforce than you're used to. Talk about how important it is for farmers to sort of tell their story. Because if I'm if I'm looking for a job, maybe I want to work for the best farmer. I want to work on the best farm. How important is it for farmers to almost tell their own story, to build a brand in their community and in their in their industry, so good employees look for them? I think it's really important, again, to come back to farmers really need to know their business, and they need to be pre-prepared to speak to their business right? To come up with that canned elevator speech that really presents what they do and their values very well. Um, the labor market is just like any market. It has elasticity and there's times when it's, <laughs> there's times when it's an employer market, when it's an employee market or a work, worker's market. That's, that's a key thing too, because I mean, like farmers are, are competing against a lot of other sectors for employees, especially in, in rural areas of Canada. We see less um, people in rural areas, and it's a, it's a tough competition now. It can be a tough competition. Knowing your business is going to enable you to stand out. I think that we are... Um we're no longer in a recession, so we're no longer in a place in the labor market where people are willing to just accept any job in order to pay the bills. People are, have the ability to be a little bit more choosy. And I think especially in ag, because we do tend to be such a close-knit sector, people are very well connected. So as much as you are interviewing your potential candidate to determine if they really fit you and your unique operation, they're also interviewing you Mm -hmm. to determine if your unique operation fits them. And so as much as, and it's always nice if the candidate is able to determine in the recruitment process that they're no longer interested. Right. That assists the farmer with a lot of efficiencies when times are tight and you're trying to recruit. It's so much better to find out if a relationship's not going to be a good fit in the early stages than after an employment contract has been signed. Talk about that interview process. You're both being interviewed. You know, what type of things should a farmer prepare to be talking about in an interview or even in a job posting? I think that um, vision, mission, and values. Mm. I think sometimes we um, we overlook we see it as more of the softer side of the business and maybe not as important of other, as other things. But yet it really does set the tone for everything that happens within one's business, including recruitment. And if, if a farmer can determine early on what their vision, mission, and values is for their unique operation, they'll be better equipped to see if those candidates fit that vi- those visions, missions, and values. What about making employees have a sense that they're part of the decision making? They're they're engaging them. They're going to be asked to contribute to the success of an organization. Is that something that employees are looking for? I absolutely think that's something that employees are looking for, especially if you are hiring people who have graduated from agriculturally related programs. These are not people who are looking for jobs. These are people who have targeted agriculture as a career choice. And those people aren't many, which means there are a lot of jobs available to them. I think that decision-making um, and, and certain levels of autonomy within rules is really important to create engagement and a sense of um, real contribution in an organization or in a business operation. I also think that it is um, really important to understand that buy-in for an organization comes through clear, consistent communication. And so the reason I really wanted to highlight that is because if a farmer doesn't fully understand the needs of their business um, and their strategic goals, 
it is very difficult for them to communicate those things to their workforce. And if they are unable to communicate those things to their workforce, they will experience disengagement. We want people to feel buy-in, but buy-in comes through communication. And so really, equipping comes at the top. So farmers need to be very intentional about really understanding themselves and their business so that they are well-equipped to communicate that to others. We've had a good conversation about how to attract employees. Let's talk about how to retain them. And I think the first thing that you point out is you really got to think about the fact that, you know, people don't leave work, people leave managers. What can farmers take from that statement? You know, it is, it's always a sensitive nav, uh, conversation to navigate with my clients, right? Because agriculture tends to be this sector where people feel so much emotional buy-in into the work that they do. Sometimes it's hard to be a little bit in somebody's face and to say, your workers aren't leaving your business. Your workers are leaving you. And they, there's enough choice out there that workers can self-advocate in that way. And so if a farmer is having trouble holding on to employees um, over the longer term, over a year, for example, then the first place um, I would suggest they start is in a moment of self-reflection right. and in a moment of empathy. You know, how would I respond to my manager if my manager managed the way I do? And that goes back to our earlier conversation about engagement. It's about getting people involved, empowering them. And sometimes those are the things that managers do not do enough of. I think that managers can sometimes forget that an employment relationship is a human relationship and that there will be give and take on both sides of the relationship in order for it to be healthy. So as much as an, employ an employer has a business need they're trying to meet and an employee is, is offering up their knowledge, skills, and abilities in order to save a paycheck, there will be more give and take than that going, moving forward. There will be uh, moments where a manager can demonstrate things like empathy and understanding when an employee is experiencing illness or disability, for example. And, and it is in those higher moments of stress that a manager will truly demonstrate to their employees who we are as a business operation. And I think I would encourage farmers to take advantage of those moments to create and foster relationships as opposed to just focusing in on the business operation needs. Let's talk about benefits and, and incentives. Where does that fit in? Benefits are really important, and, and not just because people like to get compensation and understanding you know, benefits are really a part of your compensation plan, right? People like benefits because of the security that they present to them. Their ability to take care of their children and to take care of their family and to ensure the health and safety of those in their private lives. Mm. And I think that as an employer, farmers are at a huge advantage of being able to assist their employees to do that well. You know, when an employee isn't worried about what's going on at home or getting glasses for their kids, an employee is more present and more productive at work. We know that's to be that's true. The data is there to support that. And so I would really encourage with multiple employees to explore various benefit packages available to the um, number of employees that they have. Right. Benefits packages do not have to be sweeping costs. There is a way to work it in within a budget that you already have. Um, there's also a way to um, offer group benefits at, at a discounted rate, depending on the number of employees you have, um, and to share the cost with your employees. Right. Let's talk about incentives. And, uh, you know, the fact that a lot of employees, are, again, are looking to sort of contribute, but actually getting, you know, rewarded for that contribution. And then I hear uh, situations where, you know, if it's a hog operation, for example, you can build incentives into, you know, the num for the number of piglets weaned, for example. It is a little difficult to talk about an incentive program in generalization, yeah. right? So, of course, those types of things have to be tailored to the, the uniqueness that will be each individual farm. Um, what I can say from my experience is money tends to be a poor motivator. Most people are not solely motivated through money. They will be for a short amount of time, but it starts to wear thin over time. So for example, if I receive a $5,000 bonus every Christmas, the first year I'm blown away, and the second year it's super helpful, and by the third year it just becomes a regular part of my pay that I become to ex uh, expect. Mm -hmm. It no longer has that impact the way it did the first time I received it. 
And so I've often encouraged farmers to consider how can you motivate your workforce from an intrinsic place? Because if you can figure out how to touch them as a human being, so to speak, then you can figure out how to motivate them ongoing. One great example of that is please and thank you. It's you did a good job. It's, hey, you pulled a couple extra hours for me on Saturday, and I know that took time away from your family. I want you to know I realize that, and I'm so appreciative of it. And to acknowledge people in a verbal way, to communicate that you see them and that you appreciate them can be a huge motivator ongoing, and it comes at such a little cost. It's free. Yep, and it's it's communication, right? Right, and most of the time it comes back to that people don't leave work, they leave managers. How many people do we know continue to work at jobs that they dislike because they work on teams they love? If, and especially in farming, sometimes our work isn't easy. So we want to understand that if we can have a workforce that truly feels seen and appreciated by those who are managing them, that they will return to work day after day after day, and they'll return to work even when the money's tight. Let's talk about performance reviews you know, and, and setting those expectations that there is a process that's followed and you can expect feedback and performance review. I think the absolute best way to retain employees is to ensure very clear expectations from day one. The first way we define expectations day one with our employees is through a contract. We talk about what I'm expecting from you and what you can expect from me in return and kind of our hours of operation and our our approach around confidentiality and all of those things. The other expectation that we agree on up front is how we'll terminate the relationship. And we make that decision and we have that conversation when the relationship is good, not when the relationship is bad. Oftentimes, um, I see farmers hiring people without contracts, and although that's, you know, it's, it's dangerous from a legal perspective, it's also trying to understand that that contract is really your prenuptial agreement. It's determining that if, how, if this goes south, this is how we're going to do it. And it is so helpful when the relationship doesn't go the way that you thought it might because the rules of engagement have already been agreed to. So it's about fairness, about consistency, and that contract helps to provide that. It sets the tone. It sets the tone. I think from there we start to talk about, you know, what are my performance expectations? And sometimes I have to say to farmers, we don't have the right to be angry about expectations we didn't make clear. And so I would really reinforce um, to those in a farming operation to ask themselves, how have I communicated my expectations? How did I ensure everyone knew and understood? One thing I'm always interested in is it in, in any job I get is a, 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 an employer's commitment to training and growth. How important is it for train for employers to realize that, hey, um, part of what I need to do is I need to invest in my employees? I do think that if you want your employees opportunity within your business, then you need to see the opportunity within your employees. You know, I love hearing the stories about the farm laborer who's now, who, who's now my foreman, who's now my finance person because the farmer really saw the opportunity within that employee and in, invested in them. And it paid off in spades. You know, we, not the subject matter, but recruitment has quite a high cost, right? It is cheaper to invest in some training for one of your employees than it is to hire a new one. So if you can be open to the, to the possibilities of the staff you have now and invest in them in a way that not only pays off for your business need, but also communicates to that staff, I see the potential in you and I think you're worth my investment, that creates the foundation for a very long-term relationship. Now, Lynn, we can't cover all the aspects here today in about a 15-minute conversation, but <laughs> you, you mentioned that there's some resources out there that uh, you know, you, farmers should be having a look at. The other tool that I often recommend to clients that I work with, we tend to have, I tend to encounter two types of people. We have those who have um, some downtime in their kind of their their annual cycle, and they like to take advantage of that by focusing on their business needs, and they have, uh, they would like a lot of independence in that way. And for those clients, I recommend that they check out the Canadian Agriculture Human Resources Council. They offer an agriculture HR toolkit. And the toolkit will really walk a farmer through step by step by step on how to create, implement, and maintain legally defensible human resources. 
So not only would the farmer be well equipped to manage their own HR, they can they, they know they're assured of legal compliance in an area with, that may not be their expertise. Now, the other type of sorry. Go ahead. Oh, of client that I encounter are those who don't have any downtime in their <laughs> annual cycle, right? We, we often will see that, um, for instance, in horticulture, where we have greenhouse operations operating around the clock, and they really don't have that downtime in their year. They're very pressed for time. I, I really encourage those people to reach out to consultants like myself. We can come in and be very cost effective. Mm-hmm. We can pay us for a project, and then we're not on your payroll. You're not responsible for us. And also, we can save you an incredible amount of time while easing you to know that you are legally compliant. Well, hey, um, Lynn, really appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Um, we're, uh, as I say, we've just scratched the surface, and we wanted to focus obviously on attracting and retaining. And there's so many other aspects of human resources. And uh, we'll uh, look forward to having you back on uh, Mind Your Farm Business in the future. Thank you so much for having me, Bernard. It's been my pleasure. With that, we'll wrap up another episode of Mind Your Farm Business. Lynn, I want to thank you for taking your time to share your insights on attracting and retaining employees. We also want to thank our sponsor, RBC Royal Bank, for helping make this program happen. Stay tuned for another episode of Mind Your Farm Business in the weeks ahead.